Africa. African history began long before the arrival of the Arabian and white settlers. We know today that the Homo habilis, that is the predecessor of the Homo sapien, evolved 3.5 million years ago in the East African region. The entire continent was dotted with large kingdoms which were mostly destroyed by the arrival of the Arabs and the Europeans. Moreover, the need of the slave trade depopulated the entire region. West Africa was the principal market for slaves for the New World, whilst East Africa supplied Arabia. As a result, these regions lost the knowledge and skills of their peoples. The African Conference held in Berlin in 1884 was the most dramatic and decisive point in the African colonial history. Twelve European countries and the USA met to negotiate the decision, or I mean the decision of their spheres of influence. With no consideration for existing territorial boundaries, they drew new borders, which, to some extent, still exist today and continue to be a source of dispute between African people. In the aftermath of the conference, the mother countries sent sent class and soldiers to their so-called protectorates to exploit the people. The land and mineral resources, profitability, was their motive. Despite independence, most African nations are still confronted with enormous problems. 25 of the world's 30 poorest countries are in Africa. Development aid, however, frequently forces the recipient countries into a new form of dependence. Ugandan President Museveni has summarized the situation by saying that we must return to the 15th century when we stopped being the masters of our own fate. Religion Animism is a religion which is still very widespread in Africa and continues to be practiced alongside the principles of religion. Unlike other religions, the animism faith or the animist faith is passed from generation to generation by word of mouth. Animists believe that God is the creator and ruler of all forms of life. Each African people has its own traditional system of religion in which its gods are closely linked with nature. It is generally believed that people, animals, plants, and natural phenomena have their own souls. For bears observe events in the community and can exercise their influence. Life after death exists on another plane, however, and the birth of a child is one's own family, or I mean in one's own family, ensures one's return to the world. Sacrifices and gifts offered to the gods and to one's ancestors to influence their mood and will. Charms are used to drive away evil spirits. Illness is not believed to be the result of diseases itself, or I mean of diseases or pandemics, but it is thought to be the magic or the will of the spirits. Medicine men use a medium to discover the cause in order that a medicine can be found. The latter may take the form of herbs or psychotherapy. 
Rainmakers are also important figures in the African communities. It is not only their job to produce rain, but also to stop it and prevent the threat of flooding. Rain is believed to be a phenomenon which links the human beings to the divine. As a result, if he fails, a rainmaker may lose his prestige and be subject to punishment. Although polygamy is still widespread in Africa, it is however being increasingly repressed by growing Western influence. Initiation is an important moment in the life of a young person. Initiation ceremonies usually take place during puberty when the child becomes a full member of the community. Before the ceremony, the young men and women are often subjected to certain initiation rites such as tests of courage and living out with the community. Once circumcised, the young men and women are considered to be adult. Young people who are involved in such a ceremony together are united by a rite for the rest of their lives. The arrival of foreign people heralded the introduction of the Islamic and Christian faiths in the African continent. Islam Islam means surrender to God, submission to God's will. This religion is not only a creed but also a complete way of life which lays down the rules of everyday life for its believers. Members of the Islamic faith are known as Muslims, sometimes spelt Muslim or Muslim, meaning he who surrenders and submits himself to God. The rule of conduct are practically identical throughout the Islamic world and these are strictly adhered to by all. The Islamic religion does not recognize any difference between the spiritual and the secular side of the world. Devout Muslims believe that religion, life, faith, and politics are all tightly bound together. There is therefore only one law for all members of this faith, the Sharia. The Islamic faith is the youngest world religion, yet already has approximately 1.2 billion members. These members make up a worldwide religious community known as an Ummah, in which all Muslims are bound together by one language, one creed, and one religious code. Every devout Muslim tries to follow the example of the Prophet Muhammad or Rasul in Arabic, a name which can only be used for Muhammad, whose teachings are found in the Sunnah, that is the Holy Rite. This book also contains numerous hadith or rules of conduct covering every aspect of life. The holy book of all Muslims and of the Islamic faith is the Quran, which instructs Muslims on how to live a devout and honest life. The Quran is divided into 114 surahs or chapters, which are subdivided into verses. The five pillars of Islam are embodied in the Quran and are binding for every Muslim. First is the creed. The belief in the quotation Ash Hadu Anna La Ilaha Ilah Ilah 
That is, I witness that God, there is no God but Allah, and this God is Allah. And Ashadu Anna Muhammad Rasul Ilah, that is, I witness that Muhammad is Allah's prophet, is the essential prerequisite of becoming a Muslim. Second prayer, that is the prayer Muslims are required by Islamic law to say their prayers five times a day, bowing toward Mecca as they do so. These prayers begin with morning prayers at sunrise and end with evening prayers at sunset. Non-Muslims should respect a Muslim's wish to say his prayers and help to accommodate his wishes. Third is the Ramadan, that is the month of fasting. The ninth phase of the moon in the Islamic lunar year, that is the Ramadan, is the month of fasting. This falls approximately 10 days earlier each solar year. Muslims are obliged to fast during this period. They may not partake in any pleasures such as eating, drinking, smoking, or love making between sunrise and sunset. Non Muslims should also refrain from eating, drinking, or smoking public during this period of fasting. It should be taken into consideration that people who are fasting tend to be more sensitive and all foreigners should pay particular attention to their own behavior in all Islamic countries during this month. Fourth, alms. At least once an year, Muslims should pay a tax which is used for social and religious purposes for caring for the poor. They are also obliged to donate spontaneously to the needy. On the other hand, no church taxes exist. Fifth, pilgrimage or the Hajj. Every Muslim should try and make one pilgrimage in his or her lifetime to Mecca in Saudi Arabia, providing he has the financial means and is fit enough to do so. Since Islam was introduced to Arabia, this place of pilgrimage has been the center of the Islamic religion. Once a Muslim has made the pilgrimage, he or she may add the title Hajj, that is masculine, or Hajjah, that is feminine, to his or her name. Christianity The founder of Christianity was Jesus of Nazareth, who is regarded as the son of of God by the followers of the religion. Christians believe that God appears on earth in human form through Jesus. His death at the cross and his resurrection gave redemption to all human beings. The central creed of Christianity is to preach the teachings of the New Testament Moreover, Christianity demands brotherly love from all its followers. All Christian churches share certain common religious rituals such as christening and holy communion services. Various interpretations of the Christian belief have led to the division of the religion over the course of its own 2,000 years of history. Consequently, numerous churches 
with varying religious directions have been established. Tradition and culture. A rapid process of widespread change is currently sweeping across Africa. Although Western ideas and consumer goods may well have flooded the continent, Africans remain loyal to ancient traditions. The family and in the broader sense, the tribe are the pillar of society and every individual maintains very close links with their family and country. The older generation and parents are shown particular respect. Cemeteries, that is other than Islamic and Christian, are a rare sight in Africa. The dead are often buried in their own land and sometimes even in their own house. A brother needs not necessarily be a full brother. He may be a cousin or a distant relative. Moreover, if one member of a family finds a job, his marked sense of family loyalty will lead him to employ more of his family in the same company. There is very thin line between tribalism that is loyal to the tribe and nepotism that is preferential treatment for family members. An African woman will rarely make a career for herself as she already has children by the age of 20. Despite information campaigns, only very few women use any form of contraception as many children are the symbol of fertility and mean of, se of security in one's old age. The size of the population is the criteria according to which even the power and strength of a nation is measured in Africa. Today, Approximately 50% of Africans are under the age of 15 years old. There is in fact no such thing as a typical African, as the African continent brings together more than a thousand ethnic groups and languages and an even greater number of customs and habits. Nevertheless, this huge continent can be divided into three quite distinct parts, namely the Maghreb countries in northern Africa, characterized by their Islamic faith, the sub-Saharan African nations and the Republic of South Africa. Misunderstandings between Westerners and Africans result from seemingly common moral attitudes, which may well have the same name but are interpreted on a quite different social level. Several fundamental differences are worth nothing. The Western world judges a person according to his or her achievements. In Africa, however, this takes second place to the value of the person as an individual human being. Africans attach particular importance to interhuman contact and will, for example, quite readily break off an appointment if they happen to be involved in enjoyable conversation. A Westerner, on the other hand, will consider this irresponsible and thoughtless. Time has a quite different, different meaning, I mean, in African culture, whilst many people in the West are slaves to their watches and their diaries. Time plays but a second role in African life. An African takes time for those things which are important to him. Were an African to give a definite yes or no answer, he will find himself in conflict with the traditional rules of African politeness which rejects definitive 
facts. As such, an African will never presume to pass judgment to any matter. Whilst this will suggest uncertainty or dishonesty in the Western world, it is a sign of modesty in Africa. The elderly people assume a particular significant role in society. According to the African belief, their wisdom is synonymous with experience. And as such, a young person is not a complete human being. In certain countries, there are fundamental differences in the interpretation of certain topics such as politics, religion, or democracy. It is wisest to steer clear of such topics rather than offend or say the wrong thing. Health Public health departments or hospitals with tropical disease departments can provide the most up-to-date information about vaccinations. As a rule of thumb, anyone wishing to leave the cities or planning to go on a safari should take a malaria prophylactic. Moreover, an insect repellent or spray and long-sleeved clothing, particularly for evenings, are usable. The intense heat and humidity of the subtropic climate make great physical and psychological demands on the human body. As such, it is advisable to take things easy during the first few days of one stay. Moreover, it is important to drink large quantities of liquid. The conditions of hygiene in many areas cannot be compared with Western standards. This can have unfortunate results for many visitors. Consequently, it is best to eat in a licensed restaurant only and to avoid the food stalls on the streets, no matter where one eats. However, fish, meat, milk, and poultry should be fresh and well cooked. It is also wise to avoid salad or unpeeled fruit and dairy products. Drinks should only be consumed if they are machine filled. Tap water should be boiled. It is also advisable to avoid ice cubes as they are made with tap water in many restaurants. In any case, it is always wise to have medicine for diarrhea in one's travel bag. The intensive sunshine in Africa is not to be treated lightly. The rays of the tropical suns are far more intensive, that is more ultraviolet rays than those in the suns of Europe. If you have to spend more time in the sun, a hat or sunglasses and a good sunscreen with a high protection factor are highly recommendable. Clothing It is not advisable to wear clothing made of man-made fibers. Wool clothing is recommended for cooler evenings, such as those in West Africa at the beginning of the year or the highlands of Ethiopia and Kenya. During the rainy season, it is important to store one's shoes and clothing in a dry place to avoid mildew. Safety The safest place for any important documents such as passports, tickets, etc. is the hotel safe. It is also advisable to make copies of the documents. It is not a good idea to walk alone in badly lit or secluded places. Jewelry will always attract thieves as such. It is best left at home or in a hotel safe. 
Taxis are generally safer than any other form of public transport. It is best to take care if asked for one's home address, even if this is for collections for aid organizations. Money should only be exchanged in banks or at other official exchange agencies.